Right, so this is a um, a Modern Warfare 2 uh, Jasper from the looks of things. It's got a got a Jasper power supply, so just taking a bold assumption. I've not wired it up yet. And it's going to be a full refurb of the console itself. Um, the first initial steps I'll take, obviously, I stripped down the I, I completely stripped down the uh, console down to its uh, bare frame, and then what I do is I've stripped every individual part into its own sort of area. I've completely washed it, disinfected it, do my normal steps that I do with it. Uh, I've cleaned the fan out as well. Um, and then I've just left it on this big plush rug cloth thing that I used to clean my car, but it's really, really good to dry out little plastic bits. So while I'm doing the mod on the console, I can leave this all to dry. Um, only issue is, is the serial number did wipe off. Um, so I'm gonna have to probably either print a new serial number on that or uh, write uh, the serial number on it just because I don't want it getting lost. I know it's on the metal front but just a bit on the safe side. Um, so this is going to be a, this console is going to be an RGH 1.2 um, with a core cool on Rev C um, and I'm going to be using Octal's wiring method as opposed to um, some of the other more used, like the weekend model wiring methods, so I just get a better result out of it. Um, so I'm going to get this wired up uh, to uh, J Runner, and uh, we'll see what we'll see what the information says about the console. Just as a quick tip, if you're doing this yourself, um, what I like to do is I like to get a, a very like sharp blade like this. Maybe not this sharp. You could probably use something a little bit less sharp. But I like it with it because it's got the fine point on the end. Um, and then what I'm doing is. Uh, these points here, they've got like a film on them. So what I would do is just lightly scratch. Over the top of the points. Uh, that way it gets rid of that film on the top. Um, it just allows the solder to adhere better to the pads. Um, obviously if you're using a good quality flux, you shouldn't have a problem with this. But I find that nine times out of ten, if I do this, um, I'm gonna have a better quality, uh, a better quality solder actual connection to the board itself, and I would do this to these points and then also the points that are up here underneath where the AV point is. Right, so I've just plugged the Nandex into the uh, into the Xbox. So look what we got. Cool. So we got a Jasper. Just for 16 megs, it's going to be a nice easy install. I'm going to use a Core Runner Rev C. I'm going to use this one right here. Um, I won't bridge cap on this because it's a 16 meg. Should be fine without, but no, my luck, I'll jinx that and I'll uh, need to bridge the cap. So, wiring's done on the console, as you can see. Going to an alt reset point, and then I've got the standard uh, C post and A PLL points on the bottom. They're all fine. If we just do a, you can see, not even a cycle. That'll insta boot, and there we go. Boom, all done. So the next thing that I will be doing on the console is uh, taking off the heat sinks and uh, changing the thermal paste. I do this on every console because um, after. God knows, this is a 2009, so what's that? 10 years? Over that? 11? Who knows? I can't do mental maths. Um, the point is, is that the thermal paste gets incredibly gunked up and gross. Over those X amount of years, I won't embarrass myself further because I can't do mental maths. Um, so... I've just got my X clamp tool here. I'm just going to wire this up, get this X clamp taken off. Yep, there we go. There's one. Clamps removed, and now um, be careful because this one is actually floating. Well, one of them is at least. Okay, there's one, and 
as the other. And as you can see, it goes like cement over time. Any longer and it would end up like the original Xboxes, which literally, it, it, it pretty much turns into plastic. Um, so yeah, this this console was definitely, holy, I didn't even notice that. This is this console was completely virgin. It never had its seals broken or anything like that. But the thermal paste is actually going onto the board. That's crazy. That was a real bad job. Anyways, I'm going to get this cleaned up. And uh, I'll come back once this is all tidy and looking pristine. It's just a quick tip, um, something that I do personally, uh, which works quite nicely. I get like a plastic, um, like a plastic tool like this, and then literally scrape away at the old stuff. This way, then you're not sitting there for ages trying to rub it off with a like a cotton bud or like something else and you just pick up all the crap brush it off it obviously doesn't get everything off but then this makes the um this actually makes the thermal paste the rest of the thermal paste removal at least you can just dump it in some um in some alcohol and it comes off much easier so that's just a, a quick little tip just to make the job just a, a little bit easier than it would not what it normally would be so it's not the best job because getting this stuff off around the side is such a pain in the backside that I, I do sometimes just give up doing it. As long as the actual die on the top is clean and shiny, in theory, it doesn't matter about all this crap around the side because the, con the heat sinks are only making contact with this. Um, all this is just overflow shit. If you're really picky, you can wipe it off. I don't bother. I try and get as much off as I can, but this stuff's on here like glue. So I, I don't want to keep knocking it because I don't want to knock any of these little capacitors. So uh, I'm just going to do a very small amount on there, on there, and on there like that. That's it. I'm not going to do any stupid lines. I'm not going to bother spreading it because I don't see the need. Because um, the minute I put the heat sink back on, it's gonna get spread out. I like to give it a light push like that. Grab your X clamps. Oh. And click these down. Oh. There we go. Um, something that I do like to do um, on almost all of the uh, Xboxes I work on is replace this little rubber band. Um, this controls the mechanism which opens and closes the drawer and if not done, um, obviously over time, that's what causes the uh, sticky drawer and stops it from opening. So if we take this off, so this one isn't actually that bad. Um, it's slightly egged um, like that. So it's slightly pointed at the top, but if I quickly grab a, uh, one of these, so I've got these up on the store if you need them. Uh, I sell them in packs of two. I think they're about £1.89. Um, it's not much, and it can you know do a whole lot for the console in terms of how it actually performs. But when you actually look side by side in comparison at the rubber bands, they're meant to look like this, but R1 look like this. Now, ours wasn't a sticky drawer. Um, but seeing that I'm in here, I might as well replace it with a new one. So you can get rid of the old one, and then it is just a simple case of, um, I like to hook around the small wheel there, and there we go. That's attached, we can get the drive back together and then get the console reassembled. So now that I'm ready to reassemble the console, I'm just gonna give everything a once over here. So I'm just gonna inspect everything and make sure that they are actually clean. Um, if there's any defects on it, like scratches or marks, and on top of that, make sure that they're actually dry. Um, these have been sitting here for a while now, so uh, almost about an hour. So I know that these are all going to be dry. The only places I do like to check are like the screw holes and things on the actual casing. And I'm also going to, um, this usually has a metal shield, uh, which sits flush, um, and I'm going to uh, hot glue um these standoffs onto the metal uh, there's two there and there um just so that it doesn't fall off um and that it stays flush on the plastic um and then once that's done i'll get the console reassembled 
and uh, get it all set up for going on the store. Right, the console's now back together. Um, I've got all the main bits on apart from the front fascia because the front fascia um, I'm going to need to uh, rebuild. Um, so I obviously where I clean each individual part, uh, I have to take it off its little bracket that sits there. So I'm going to have to rebuild that and I'm going to have to rebuild these and I also reinforce the flaps and the little uh, springs. I use just a tiny little bit of hot glue, just pop it on top of there so it just gives it that little bit of extra uh, strength in case um, they do have a break in the future so I'm gonna get that done now. This is the final product so we've got the console back together all the flaps are working USB ports nice and back together so we can switch this on should have a nice insta boot there we go if we come back up to here we go and um, we quickly pop the controller in because at this point now I am going to um, give the console a full test um, so there we go so we can just try the normal stuff like the DVD tray fine and I've got Halo 3 on the hard drive hence why it's plugged in um, and I use that to just test over the console just because it's quite a nice and easy game to run so I'm going to let that test through now and uh, that should be all. So yeah, any other questions or um, and all the links and things, they'll, they'll be in the description.